Hey you guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. This is my worm farm and this is my worm food. And today I'm gonna to share with you how to feed and maintain your worm bin. First things first, I want you to know that maintaining a worm farm or a worm bin is really, really simple. And feeding your worms is also super, super simple. You just need to start off the right way. So if you haven't seen my videos on how to start a super simple composting bin, a stacking worm bin, or a more complicated setup like this, definitely check out the playlist and the videos linked up above because getting off to the right start is really important to maintaining a healthy worm farm. And the second thing I want you to know is that you can do this. Like so many things, homesteading and farming, like sourdough or kombucha or starting a garden or maintaining livestock, it all seems really intimidating at first. You're kind of wondering, can I really do this? And I know a lot of people tell me, they're like, I really want to start a worm farm, but I'm nervous. You can totally do this. Maintaining worms is really, really simple. It's very low effort. You just got to get started right. So make sure you go watch those videos and stick around for this series because you guys have had so many great questions. I figured let's just turn this into a series. I'll take you with me week by week and we'll maintain the worm farm together. We'll learn together. You can ask your questions and we can watch the process as the worm bins develop and we get our wonderful, rich, bioavailable, nutrient rich compost right here in my backyard. Odor free, full of nutrients, wonderful for the garden. And hey, if we get enough worms, we might even be able to sell some. So, so glad you're here. If you find these videos helpful, informative, entertaining, please give me a like, thumbs up, and consider subscribing because those all help me find favor amongst the YouTube algorithm gods. So thank you so much for the likes, the comments, the shares, the subscribes. It really helps my channel grow. Without further ado, let's hop into the bins. Apparently Project Natalie thought that this was a good place to keep scissors. I've been looking for these scissors. <laughs> All right, so the first step to maintaining your worm farm and feeding your worms is to check on your bins. My bins have been out here almost a week and a half, maybe two weeks. I've let them kind of get established. It's time to check in on them and see what's happening inside and see if it's time to feed them. One of the biggest mistakes people make in the beginning is overfeeding their bins. If you go back and watch Vintage Hey It's a Good Life, I made my, my first worms like a smoothie. It was way too wet. We had all these flies. Like I had no idea what I was doing. I was giving it my best. I learned a lot. It's all good. <laughs> uh, but you really want to check what's happening in the bins. We're really looking for two things when we open the bins, that the food is getting eaten, that it's not too moist and that it's not too dry realized that I should add something. The only thing I've done since I've seen you last with the worm bins is I've added about half an inch of compost to the top, unfinished compost, kind of like a woody mulch type compost, uh, just because I could see the food at the top and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't inviting any unwanted guests to the party and I like to make sure that the food is covered. So that's the only thing I've done since I've seen you last. So let's hop into the bins and check out what's happening. Here is that woody mulch which is already getting broken down. That's really good to see. A huge chunk of broccoli. What I would love, oh, what I would love to see is some worms and I just found one. Hello, hi, are you enjoying your new home? So that's good. That's a really good sign. We see worms, we see most of the food, except for maybe these bigger chunks have started to break down. I don't see any signs of like the banana, the avocado that we added last time. So all of that is a really good sign. Now assessing for moisture. I think that these bins could do with a little water. So after we feed them, we'll add some water. Um, this feels a little dry. We're looking for the consistency of a wrung out sponge and this just, it's just feeling a little dry to me. So we are gonna add a little bit of water here in a second as well. All right, so just a little recap. The bins are looking really good. First of all, we see signs of life. We found worms, which is always a good sign. It's not always easy to find them because sometimes they'll clump together in a little ball, which can be a sign of stress, but ours look evenly dispersed throughout the bin. So that's really good. Another good thing, most of the food is decomposing. I didn't see any signs of the banana or avocado or any of the leafy greens, which was really good. The only thing that was really still around was the broccoli, which isn't really their favorite food anyway. So it's gonna take them longer to digest that. And the last thing was moisture. The moisture was pretty good. I, I will say that it is on the drier side of a wrung out sponge. So after we feed, we'll go ahead and add some more moisture in the form of filtered water. Uh, 
That was disgusting. And I will not be adding that to my worm bins. Sorry I had to see that. I do, however, have some old kale and lettuce. So we'll work with that instead. All right, so for today's feeding, I'm going to be feeding my worms some food scraps, and I'm also going to be adding some more worms to the bins. Now, I don't wanna confuse anybody, but I want you to know that you can always add more worms to your bins if you feel so inclined. I am greedy and I want compost quickly, so I'm gonna add some more worms because I started with just 200 amongst six bins, and I'd like to see this process go a little bit faster. So I got some more worms from our local uh, feed store here in North County. We are on Thanksgiving weekend. It's super important to support local where you can. So while I could have bought these online, I went to the feed store and got them there because support local when you can, right? Uh, so I've got my worms here. I've got my food scraps. Now it's just time to add these to the bins. Uh, before we do that, I figured I would answer some questions that you guys have had about worms. So one question that you guys have had about worms and selecting the best worms for vermicomposting is, Natalie, can I just dig up some worms from my garden? And to that I say, you could, but you don't really know what you're getting. And it's funny because when Tommy and I went to the feed store, he actually asked the same thing. He's like, whoa, $15, that's kind of a lot for worms. And I was like, yeah, but support local. <laughs> and he, he asked the same thing. He said, you know, can't you just dig in the garden beds and get some worms? Which I said, I could, but I don't know that I'll be actually getting red wigglers. And the cool thing about red wigglers is that they're surface dwellers. And things like earthworms or European night crawlers or African night crawlers or all of the other like 3000 plus species of worms out there is they like to be at different layers. So there are surface dwelling worms. They're kind of like mid layer dwelling worms. And then there's like the deep earth worms. And so you wanna make sure that for whatever your purpose of your worm bin is that you're selecting the right kind. And I prefer to feed from the top. It's a very simple way to maintain a worm farm so I use red wigglers so a lot of you guys have asked can I just dig up garden worms and add them to the worm bin you could although I don't think it will yield the same result and I really recommend going with something that's like a more surface dwelling worm like a red wiggler isn't it so great when you live in the city and all you can hear is like beeps and sirens and planes and a freeway hopefully you guys can't hear all of that <laughs> anyway let's talk about what to feed your worms A lot of you guys have asked good questions about what to feed worms and I just want to clarify a couple things. When it comes to feeding worms, you can feed them just about any food scrap. So in here, I've got coffee grinds, a tea bag, and some leafy greens. Is this their favorite food? No. Their favorite foods are bananas and avocados. Foods that they don't like are anything citrusy, spicy, meat, dairy, or oil. You really want to avoid at least those five things. Keep it simple, give them your old bananas when they go bad because you didn't eat them quick enough, or that avocado in the back of the fridge, they'll love it. Leafy greens, they're okay. It's not their favorite food, but it's what I have on hand for them today, and it's what we're gonna feed them right now. So let's hop into the bins and feed our worms. All right, so for this week's worm farm maintenance, it's super, super simple. I don't want you guys to overthink this, okay? We are going to add some food scraps. We are going to add some worms. We are going to cover all of that with browns and then we're going to water it down just a little bit to make sure that the bins have enough moisture. That's it. to add the worms <laughs> so we're just gonna peel back the layers here add the worms and then cover them back up sometimes worms have little friends grubs Japanese beetle grubs so gross when you can 
take these out of your bins. Ugh. If only I had chickens. So there's my very honest process for you guys. I kind of messed up. It should have gone something like this. Add worms, feed worms, cover worms. I realized halfway through the process though that I forgot to add the worms. So hopefully it shows you it's very foolproof. You can just kind of peel back the layers, add the worms if you feel so inclined, and then redo the layers so that they're nice and tidy. So it should look something like add worms, feed worms, cover worms, and we're gonna water the worms a little bit as well. The goal with watering is damp sponge. That's what we're going for. Not too much, not too little, just enough to keep things moist like that of a damp sponge. All right, so for this lower layer of worm farm bins, let's go ahead and do it the right way. Okay, the process is very simple. We're gonna add worms feed worms, cover worms, water worms. This is about how much food I'm adding to each bin on this first week of feeding. Right, so here is what the worm bins are looking like after this first week of maintaining the worm farm. We'll check back on it next week. Right, and that's it. That is how to maintain a worm farm. That is how to feed a worm farm. Super simple, super straightforward, and hopefully that gives you a very hands-on feel and view of what it looks like to start a worm farm, maintain a worm farm, and take care of your bins as you make wonderful nutrient-rich compost in the comfort of your own home and backyard. All right, so a quick how to maintain your worm farm, how to feed your worms recap from today. Let's talk about what we learned. But before we hop into that, I wanna know what you learned. Leave a comment down below, cause it could be different from what I'm thinking or what some of these other viewers are thinking, and then we can learn and grow together. So if you've left your comment, great. Now let's hop into what I think were some valuable lessons for today. First and foremost, worms. It's really important when you're selecting your worms to make sure that they're all alive and generally healthy. I felt like our worms looked pretty good. They were a little stressed because we did see some signs of balling up. And I felt like one bin had more worms than the other one. And that's what's hard about when you buy worms by the count instead of by the weight is that you don't really know if there are really 200 worms in there. And so that was kind of disappointing when I opened up the second bin and I was like, oh no, where are all the worms? Like, I feel like there should be more in here. So that's something to keep in mind is if you're buying locally or you're buying by the count, just kind of verify generally as best as you can that you are getting what you paid for. Um, that's just kind of like a general thing that I would recommend about buying anything. You wanna inspect your purchase, but things to look for when you're buying worms are signs of life, signs that 
they've been cared for, like they're not super dried out or super wet, and obviously that they're not super clumped together either because that can be a sign of stress. I hope you also learned that it's okay to make mistakes. As you saw when I was feeding the top bins, I totally messed up and forgot to add the worms when I was going to add the worms, but that's okay because it's really simple. You can peel back the layers, add some more worms if you feel so inclined, and then just put the layers back in place. Um, so hopefully you learned that this is pretty foolproof and that it's okay to make mistakes. Learn as we go, learn as we grow. All of those wonderful gardening cliches <laughs> apply to worm farming as well. <laughs> you learn that you can now use your leaves from your lawn as it's fall and all the leaves are falling you can um, you can gather those leaves and have somewhere productive to put them so in years past we've just dumped leaves we've not really had to worry about them when we were living in the apartment but now we have leaves and they're our responsibility to deal with I love that I can rake them up and put them to good use in the worm farm oh another thing that we learned today is that we definitely don't want to be including other things other than worms into our worm bin. So if you see a grub or some kind of bug, it's not the worst thing in the world, but they're gross and you don't need them in your worm bin. So you certainly don't want to encourage the population of Japanese beetles where you live. So I like to pluck them out and smash them. If I had chickens, I would totally give them the chickens, but no chickens for me just yet one day soon. <laughs> I think that's just about it. That's everything that I learned today. Hopefully it's offered value to your life as well and your worm farming journey. Of course, you can get my free quick start guide or my ebook on our Etsy page. Feel free to check those out. And if you learned something, leave me a like, drop me a comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want to see next. Come along for the ride. Wild ride that is worm farming in the suburbs. Thank you so much for joining me today, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.